The bar fight between Jeff Hardy and Sheamus is actually happening tonight on Friday Night Smackdown on Fox. Yes, we are finally going to see it. Oh, here we go. I mean, it just the high hope. I really, 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 really do hope that this is the end of it. I really do. The fact that we're even having this, right? This is a bar fight between Sheamus and recovering alcoholic Jeff Hardy. Yes, yes, they are putting someone who is a recovering alcoholic, not much like, oh, he was an alcoholic two or three years ago. He was an alcoholic, I don't know, nine months ago, and they're putting him back in a bar already. He hasn't even achieved one year of sobriety, and he's already shooting or doing matches back inside of a bar. It just, it, it's, it's crazy. Um, of course, this match was originally set for uh, the horror show at Extreme Rules, that pay-per-view, but it didn't appear on the card on Sunday as planned. It was just moved to tonight's show instead. Now, why was it moved to there? Likely um, due to ratings, of course, SmackDown, like with every WWE programming, and to be fair, most programming in general, not just WWE, just not just professional wrestling, just programming in general has seen a decline, haven't we, in ratings uh, since the pandemic hit for several reasons people just aren't as interested in watching wrestling they have bigger and better things to worry about uh, a lot of people are saving money cutting the cord they don't have cable anymore um just it's it, they're just it's, it's difficult it's it, it's a difficult time to uh to be producing pro wrestling and to get people to get people watching so um that's that's just the case with that um but the bar the bar fight that's not what they're calling it will indeed take place this friday tonight on smackdown uh, and it's believed, as I mentioned, to have been pushed forward with the low ratings. Um, I, what is there to be said on this match? This feud, not only has this been this feud been going on for way too long now, uh, but this feud started, what, about April, just after WrestleMania. We knew Jeff Hardy was coming back. We saw the vignettes. We saw the road to redemption, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Sheamus was annoyed by this. Sheamus was really angry by this. Uh, so much so that he had Jeff Hardy in the Intercontinental Championship. Easy for me to say. Tournament. Post-WrestleMania, Jeff Hardy beat him. And then we saw... Oh, already heading into that, we had the Sheamus kind of calling Jeff Hardy a, a junkie and, and a drug addict and all of that sort of stuff. Then we had the uh, hit and run on Elias. The hit and run drunk driving setup to Jeff Hardy. Uh, that I, to be honest, I still can't believe that segment actually happened. Like, if you think about it, that 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 was a thing, and that happened, and you look back on it. <laughs> so Elias gets run down by a by someone in a car. He's injured, right? He's injured now, and uh, the police have done nothing, nothing about it since. I mean, I know Elias is injured, and now maybe I'm trying to do logic or put logic in places where there isn't any logic but come on so he gets set up jeff hardy uh, as the person that ran down uh that ran down elias uh because the as elias is found on the floor outside of the performance center we find uh, what is apparently jeff hardy's uh, rental car it's got jeff hardy's name in it it's got a bottle of alcohol in there as well um, and then they find Jeff Hardy, I don't know, like 200 feet away in a bush, stinking of alcohol, disheveled, not knowing where he is. We come to find out that he was set up by, they say, eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses say someone with red hair and a red beard, even though that person with the red hair and red beard hasn't faced any form of justice. I know Seamus hasn't been arrested or anything like that, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, and then since then, they had the, the match at Backlash, which I thought was going to be the end of it. It wasn't. It wasn't the end of the feud because Sheamus won pretty decisively. And and was like, oh, okay, that's weird. Um, and what was also frustrating with that, uh, and I will touch on this, is a WWE Chronicle was made and it kind of followed Jeff Hardy around for that day and followed around everyone during the day of Backlash when they were making that. And uh, Jeff Hardy has his match with Sheamus. And in fairness... The match itself was fine. It was it was it was a good match. It was it was a decent match. The feud is something else. The storyline is something else. But the feud is um, but the match was fine. They go backstage. They're high five and brief Pritchard. That was awesome. That was great. Vince Man. Oh, he, Vince Man swears more than me, and I have to censor myself for YouTube. But he's giving it. Yeah, it was amazing. It's great. Dion Dudley. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. What are you watching? Uh, honestly, what are you watching? Have you been? I, it worries me because you see that, and then it makes you think. Right, they're doing this every time they do a segment, 
And it reminds me of what John Moxley was saying on that infamous Talk is Jericho uh, interview he did when he left the company. Now, John Moxley, his contract expires with WWE around April last year. He leaves, goes to AEW, and then he did an interview on Talk is Jericho venting and talking about all of his problems with WWE and what was going on during that. And he mentioned that they would have these god-awful television shows, like on Monday Night Raw, every Monday night. And at the end of the show, they're all high-fiving. Yeah, that was great. It was amazing. Yeah, I was amazing. That was great. And it's the same thing here. You now know that when they are having these segments, like, right, so after heading into Backlash, we had the urine test, right? The public urine test, because I'm not going to face Jeff Hardy unless he passes a urine test. Because why would that matter? If an inebriated Jeff Hardy shows up to Backlash, you would just bro-kick him and beat him in about five seconds. Look at Sting. It actually happened. He did that. But they have the urine test. And uh, then Jeff Hardy has about a camel size bucket of piss that he then proceeds to throw at Sheamus. Uh, and that was just a rehash of a segment from 2006. And I say a rehash. I mean an exact copy of the dialogue, everything used, including the punchline. So that was heading into Backlash. And you know for a fact then, they're probably high-fiving. Oh, wasn't that segment great? Oh, God, that segment. Ah, oh, it was just, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was dynamite television. In reality, it was so bad that Fox cut it from the West Coast feed because it was terrible. It was that bad, and they were like, what? What, what, what is that? $1 billion. I always say this. $1 billion. That is what Fox paid for SmackDown. They paid $1 billion. It's a $1 billion contract. And we heard all those things. You remember Fox wants uh, reality-based television Fox wants sports centric presentation that was it a sport sports centric presentation of smackdown they want it to fit in with their nfl lineup they want it to fit in with the major league baseball they want it to fit in with all of this stuff all of it and then what and then and then what happens and then what happens they get there they get guys and guys in dog suits they get guys thrown around urine you know what what it's just, it's it's crazy. It's crazy, and I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I watch it, and I'm just, I, I, if I'm speechless, what do the Fox executives think? What do the Fox executives think? I, that's what I always think to myself. What do the Fox executives think? Now, um, we also had on top of uh, Jeff Hardy, the alcoholic, being put in a bar fight tonight, being put in a bar, because that's where the match is going to take place. It is going to take place in an actual bar setting. I guess they would have pre-taped this and filmed it in a local bar. I would I would hope so, unless they just, they're going to have a match in the ring it's going to be surrounded by bottles of alcohol, which that would suck. So I'm guessing it's going to be set in a bar. Okay. So not only do you have the you know recovering alcoholic being put into a bar, uh, but also you had the segment a few weeks ago, a toast to Jeff Hardy. A toast to to Jeff Hardy, right? That's what it was. A toast to Jeff Hardy. And uh, Jeff Hardy foot comes to the toast first, which again, that makes no sense. <laughs> he knows it's a rib, so why would he go there first? Whatever. And then you have some guy hold champagne right under his nose, right under his nose. And I said, I said this at the time, that they are putting champagne under the nose of a recovering alcoholic. And a lot of people said, no, come on. WWE wouldn't do that. Well, why would they do that? WWE wouldn't do that. Come on. Do you ever think a company like WWE would be so insensitive? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I tell this story all the time. Bruce Pritchard, the executive director of SmackDown and Raw, when he was doing his podcast, Something to Wrestle With, told this story. So, in back in 2002, the NWO, they're back in WWE, right? And uh, Scott Hall's feud hanging, heading into WrestleMania was with uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. They had a series of segments on SmackDown where Steve Austin kidnapped uh, Scott Hall and he tied him up with duct tape, strapped him to a chair uh, and proceeded to drink alcohol in front of him and smash him over the head with alcohol, pour alcohol all the way over him, all of it. At the time, Scott Hall, and he still is a recovering alcoholic. Scott Hall's issues when it comes to alcohol and uh, drugs are well, well documented. Uh, 
At the time, to ensure that he did not take a sip of alcohol and kept his sobriety, he was on medication called Antabuse. Now, if you're not familiar with that medication, what that does is that once you take it, if you do have even the slightest drop of alcohol, sometimes even the whiff of alcohol, you will get violently sick and have bad a bad stomach, violently vomit over and over again. And WWE knew this and they poured beer over Scott Hall anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, it, that, that's what they that's what they are. That's what WWE do. So for people to say, well, you know, they, they've got Jeff Hardy's best interest in heart. This is what they want. They're trying to, they're trying to send a positive message. I hear that response about it all the time. Which we're just trying to educate people. We're trying to send a positive message. How on earth, how on earth is it educational to point at someone and say, this guy's a junkie, this guy's an alcoholic, you can't trust this guy, this guy fails, and then beat him anyway? What? <laughs> what? How does that work? How does that work? And realistically, Jeff Hardy isn't even out of the woods when it comes to his legal issues because of his, um, his past problems when it comes to alcohol and drugs. He still has a court date. Now, because of uh, COVID-19, because of the pandemic, it's been delayed and delayed and delayed and pushed back for his upcoming court appearance following his arrest in October last year. It hasn't even been a year since his last arrest due to a DUI. He was arrested in October of 2019 for driving while impaired, after which he entered an inpatient rehab which he has discussed in a recent WWE Network documentary. And I see this as well. I say, um, you know, WWE, they're making light out of this for financial gain, blah, blah, blah. And uh, some people will say, well, yeah, but WWE paid for his uh, rehab. And then I'll say, well, they do that for everyone. And the reason why WWE pays for rehab for everyone, if they're a current employee, if they're a former employee, if they work for WWE for one day, they will pay for your rehab. And the reason why is PR. That is why they do it, and they do it to avoid any blame, any blame, because the WWE schedule for the longest time was the gruelest, gru most grueling and most brutal schedule around. You're on the road 300 days plus a year. You're away from your families, and you're broken down, and you hurt, and a way to mask that is through uh, painkillers, through drugs, through alcohol, and people develop problems. And you can look at that and go, well, what is the common thread here? I'm not, and I don't agree to this, but some people do. They go, well, WWE, it, you can't, there's a lot of people and the, the records are there for the amount of wrestlers that have died early. And WWE doesn't want to have that, be a part of that. So to counterbalance that, they say we offer rehab and inpatient therapy for everyone that's an employee. They do it for PR. And again, and they also do it, I'm assuming, because they care and they probably do. That's true. But they do it for PR. So people to say, well, they went out of their way to help Jeff Hardy. They help everyone, okay? And that's not to discredit what they've done for Jeff Hardy at all. But, you know, this idea that he, Jeff Hardy can now be buried and be called a junkie on worldwide television because WWE paid for his rehab, it doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. Now, the court date for this uh, DUI charge has been pushed back once again. It's been pushed back several times. It was originally set for May 11th, but it's been pushed back... It was then pushed back to July 16. Now it's been pushed back once again to September 28. To be honest, it'll probably be pushed back once again. That's just the state of uh, with the courts and uh, the pandemic with the courts. It's not an essential thing in court at the moment. So it's just, it's one of those things. But again, it's one of those things. <laughs> he, this guy's still in court for DUI and you're still making uh, a storyline out of it for monetary gain, for profit. So that says what all needs to be said about the mindset when it comes to WWE of this. And I don't think I've seen anyone enjoy this storyline. I don't think I've seen anyone um, look at this and go, this was really educational. This was, this was super educational. I'll go. I feel this. It's just, it's just not like that. It, it, it just isn't like that. So like I said, hopefully this is the end to this feud. I would hope Jeff Hardy wins and then he can move on. Because Jeff Hardy's going to be leaving the company. This is Jeff Hardy's final contract. His contract expires sometime in 2021. It was meant to expire uh, back in March or April of this year when his brother Matt Hardy's contract expired. But of course, Jeff Hardy has had so many injuries during this last WWE run that there's been a lot of time added on to his contract because that's what they can do. If you're injured, there's a clause in the contract to say that every time you're on the shelf and you can't perform, they add that time onto your contract at the end. Um, so Jeff Hardy's likely contract is going to expire Probably around WrestleMania time, I would suspect, of 2021, maybe next summer. Who knows? 
Um, but, and Jeff Hardy, the rumours and reports suggest that he, he doesn't really have much interest in signing a new WWE contract. Not because he hates it there or anything like that. I think mainly just because the reason he came back to WWE was the same reason that Matt Hardy came back to WWE was that they ended under a bit of a black cloud. When Jeff Hardy left in 2009, he was in a really, really bad way. And he wanted to come back and sort of end the chapter on the right terms. And same with Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy felt like he's, he's done that and he's now with AEW. And Jeff Hardy still wants the same. He wants this final run with WWE to be the best it possibly can be. And do you really think he would have envisaged a storyline where he's been called a junkie and an alcoholic every every week on SmackDown? I don't think so. Prior to him coming back, he spoke about one in the face of the likes of Roman Reigns or facing Bray Wyatt in a cinematic match, going against The Fiend. Or even possibly having his retirement match against Brock Lesnar because it's a little known fact that Brock Lesnar, his first match on WWE television was at Backlash 2002. Who was it against? Jeff Hardy. So that's a nice story. Jeff Hardy was Brock's first match. Brock Lesnar is Jeff Hardy's last match. He was thinking all of these things. Oh, wow, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be great? And what happens a few months in, he's uh, in a bar fight with Sheamus. Uh, and that's no slight to Sheamus, but he's in a bar fight with Sheamus uh, being called a junkie and an alcoholic because that's the creativity that WWE has. That, and that's ultimately what it comes down to. Um, I, th- I think as a prediction, I think Jeff Hardy will win. It's, I think it's a pretty a given that he'll win this one. And then hopefully, like I said, we can end this feud and move on. Heading into SummerSlam, look... I wouldn't put it past WWE, but if we're going into SummerSlam looking at Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus 3, then I'll be very, very disappointed. Hopefully by then it's over and we can... Jeff Hardy can just do something different. Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles into Continental Championship, SummerSlam. Make that happen. Just don't have Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus. I beg of you, WWE. If you're going to do anything right, please, just don't have Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus at SummerSlam. But, of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts? Will you be watching Friday Night Smackdown tonight? Will you be watching the Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy bar fight? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Uh, I'll be sure to interact and reply to all of your comments. I really enjoy speaking with you guys in the comments section. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give us a like. Likes on the channel really do help us out to get into people's recommendation feeds and get our videos out to more people. So if you have enjoyed it, please do like the video. Likewise, if you've enjoyed the video, you can also share it by clicking the share button. And most importantly, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. We're on the road to 600 subscribers on the long road uh, to that 1,000 subscriber goal. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you have already uh, subscribed, I really do appreciate everyone that takes the time to watch, like, and just interact with these these videos and this channel. It really does mean a lot. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.